ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد بن عبد الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار الحمد لله we praise Allah we seek his aid and we seek his forgiveness we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of ourselves and the evil of our bad deeds whomsoever Allah guides none can misguide and whomsoever Allah allows to be led astray, none can guide. And I bear witness that there's no one worthy of worship except Allah Ta'ala, the Exalted, and that Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, is his last messenger and slave. O you who believe, fear your Lord, and die not except in a state of submission to him alone. Fear your Lord who created you from a single soul, and from that created its mates, and from that scatters many men and women. O humanity, fear your Lord, and do not cut off relations with your kin with your relatives. Indeed, Allah is Ar-Raqib. He is the ultimate monitor over you. O humanity, fear your Lord and speak the truth. Qawlan Sadida. In return, yuslih lakum a'malakum. He will rectify for you your affairs and he will forgive you of the sins that you may have committed. And whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has indeed achieved the greatest achievement. As to what follows, indeed the best speech is the book of Allah and the best guidance is that of Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. And of the worst affairs in our doctrinal system of Islam are the newly invented ones. For every newly invented affair in this situation is an innovation. And for every innovation is a form of going astray. And for every form of going astray is in the fire of hell. And we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from that. We living in the West face many different trials, tribulations, new encounters, new frontiers that we always will continually see in front of us. Just as an individual that one time came from another country and he had an opportunity to come here to study and to learn in order to possibly go back to his country or to stay in this country and benefit. And he decided to come over to this country and he learned and obtained his degree. But he had his wife in the country of his origin. And upon trying to bring his wife, it took him roughly around three years to do so. When he would go to the embassy, no explanation. Try to find out, some of his friends told him, look, your paperwork is in a black hole somewhere. Possibly because you are Muslim. That may be because the country you are coming from. But he himself is saying, what did I do to this country except come to learn and benefit? When he gets a lawyer, he finds out that he should have gotten a lawyer. And he was delayed years for making sure that his rights as a human being are maintained. That his rights as a human being are maintained. When speaking to an African-American individual one time, and when he heard about the border control or when the president, the current president of the United States wanted to prohibit people from coming in, particularly from Islamic countries, if you will, and other countries, to be fair, when he wanted to prohibit that, and was motioned by some of his classmates that were Muslim to come and get involved. His first question was, what has your community done for our community? Where has the reciprocity taken place? Where has it happened to where what you ascribe to and what you identify as, and the individuals that identify as such, where have they come forth and shown their civic engagement to get involved to help our community? That was a question that was left unanswered. So when we look in this society of individuals 
in America that is highly diverse. And when we look at the Muslim Ummah that is highly diverse, this could be an opportunity or it can serve as a threat. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked by a companion named Abu Dhar al-Ghifari radiallahu anhu, Jundub ibn Junada radiallahu anhu. He asked him, what is an action that can admit me into Jannah? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, al-Imanu billah. He said, belief in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. But then Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu, if we knew his nature, mashallah, he was a person that was aesthetic, he was a zahid. And he was someone that was very vocal for the sake of Allah. And sometimes could be kind of aggressive. Radiallahu anhu. He said, Oh Messenger of Allah, inna ma'al imani amalan. He said, But with iman, with belief in Allah, there is actions also. So the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, To give a little from what you have. Yardahu mimma razakahullah. To give a little from what you have. Then he said, well, what if the person themselves only has a little and they cannot give? He said, المنكر, To order that which is good and to forbid that which is evil. Abu Dhar didn't give up. He said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, what if the person is vulnerable and is not able to do that? He said, Then he should teach an unskilled person, help an unskilled person. Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu, he said, What if the person himself? has no skills and he's not able to help that person. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam continued patient. He said, to help an individual that is maghloob, an overpowered person. To help an overpowered, weak person. And then Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu said, but what if that person is weak himself? And he's not able to even do that. Whereupon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, La tada'li akhika. Min khayrin ya Abu Dhar. He said, you're not going to leave any door of good or any opportunity of good. You're not going to leave anything for your brother or Abu Dhar. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he should withhold harm from people. And then Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu, he asked him, O oh, Messenger of Allah, if he was to do this, would this admit him into Jannah? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, a qaidah, a general rule. He said, if he was to take one of these khisal, khaslatum in hadhi khisal, if he was to take one of these characteristics or actions or tasks to do one of these things, then this one of these actions would take him by the hand and permit him into Jannah. For this, brothers and sisters, in a time of confusion, where Muslims are confused, we don't know what's right and what's wrong to do, or we are angry at the state that we're in. We see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this hadith makes it very, very clear a number of things. That we as Muslims should not be thinking when it comes to our actions in an idealistic fashion. Meaning that if it's not 100% perfect, we leave it. Or if it's not as we know, as we read in the Quran and the Sunnah as the Sahaba were, then it is something that we don't touch. We don't get involved in. We don't emulate. This was negated in this hadith because there are situations to where people may not be able to do the most idealistic thing, but he gives them other options, which leads to another point, another benefit. Do what is in your capabilities to help. Do what is in your capabilities to help. When we see that as an ummah, we may not have reached the ideal state as an ummah, even within a masjid. There may be certain hatred amongst brothers and sisters. There may be racism. There may be discrimination. This takes place for human beings. And we have not yet reached that level to where on a general scale, there was ta'awun ala al-birri wa taqwa. There was helping and assisting in that which is good. But do what you can. And if we notice thoroughly in this hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the first thing he said is iman billah. But the manifestation, the way that you would act out that Iman, the way you would actualize that Iman is in doing something that would help someone else. Everything that he said was an action that assisted and helped someone other than yourself, not confined to Muslims only. The Prophet ﷺ also said in the hadith, 
if the hour, hour was to be established, if the hour was to be established, and there is in your hand, fasila, and this is like a small tree that you want to plant, that you need to put in the soil, and you are able to do so, and you know the hour is about to be established, فَلْيَغْرِسْهَا Then he should plant it, showing the urgency of doing what you can, even if you know it's literally the end of time doing what you can to help others. And then in this spirit, in this spirit, I want to speak about the importance of civic engagement. What do we mean by civic engagement and why is there an urgency for us as Muslims, especially in America, to get involved with civic engagement? We see that the Institute of Social Policy and Understanding, they take polls, and surveys and write articles about what goes on with the Muslim Ummah and even outside the Ummah on things that may affect the Muslim Ummah. We see that they have mentioned in particular that Muslims, for example, 75% of the Muslim Ummah was registered to vote from faith groups. We see Catholics are at 95%, Protestants are at 94, Jewish are at 86, Muslims at 75 that are registered to vote in 2016. One may say registering to vote is not within my capacity, but we say if you are registered and you are capable and you are legible to be someone that's registered to vote, you should take part in that to help get involved. And that is an implementation of civic engagement. Civic engagement is getting involved in the process of actions and things that will help better the lives of people that will help people live better lives in a locality. That is civic engagement. So we understand that the Muslim in general, and in specific even, the one that lives in America should take part in getting involved in things that help people's lives, not only in the walls of the masjid, not only in the walls of your home, but outside, to step outside of the boundaries of being of, of Islam or your, the Muslim community and getting involved with your neighbors, bridging the gaps between the individuals that don't know who you are or what this building represents. As we know, there was a masjid years ago. When they started to build the masjid, we, we know that there was a garden next to them, property. The people in spite started to have pig races. But what happened? Because of the civic engagement, the walls of ignorance, the walls of prejudice were broken and a means of healthy pluralism was established. So when we understand the civic engagement, we have to understand, brothers and sisters, the examples that I gave earlier are very, very important for us to understand that we have to take some effort to reach out to our neighbor that doesn't know who we are to our YMCA that doesn't know who is this child, this woman, this girl that has hijab on. What does that represent? How can I get involved? We see that civic engagement is twofold. From a principle standpoint and a practicality standpoint. When we talk about our principles, we as Muslims have principles. We are principled individuals. Our religion calls for you to be a principled individual, meaning that there are boundaries that you will not cross and there are things that you must implement in order to maintain morality, spirituality. In other words, to be a good citizen, which is synonymous with being a good Muslim. We see that the Prophet ﷺ was known as Rahmatan lil alameen, a mercy for mankind. But a condition for being a mercy for mankind when we understand that mercy means withholding harm from others than yourself, withholding harm from someone, you can punish them even if they deserve it, but you withhold that from them. That is mercy. And that is what the Prophet ﷺ was for mankind. But a condition for that, brothers and sisters, is to love for your brother what you love for yourself. How can you be merciful on someone if you do not love for them what you would love for yourself? And when we see based on the context, this word, akhihi, as some scholars have mentioned, could be an insan, humanity. So there is not a religious barrier here. If there is someone that you see their right has been violated, it can be upon you to demand that those rights are maintained. 
at least speaking out about it or writing about it or doing something that can help maintain the rights of that individual. And that is civic engagement. That is how you get engaged. That is how you help society. When we see this, we understand that this is the only way that we will fulfill the verse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says after a'udhu billah min ash-shaytan ar-rajim kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lil nas ta'muruna bil ma'ruf wa tanhawna 'alal munkar wa tu'minuna billah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you were the best nation that was sent out he uses the passive form you were sent out to the people what do you do order the good forbid the evil and you believe in Allah that belief in Allah serves as the engine for you to keep moving and ordering the good and forbidding the evil. Not to see something and don't say or do anything about it. Using the processes and the methods that help establish justice to you, your family, and in this particular situation, society as a whole. So we see the urgency is firstly from a principled standpoint that we love for people what we love for ourselves. And because of that, if that is there, we will be merciful to everyone around us. And secondly, from a practical standpoint, all of us, when we have this initial love for humanity, whether it's the man asking for money on the street, or whether it's the individual that may not be Muslim, but there is a law or a bill that is passed that prohibits him or her from implementing their human right. We form organizations, groups, that will have a mission in maintaining those rights of human beings. And we as Muslims, mashallah, we have a number of them. But there are other groups that are not Muslim that have these same universal goals. So in this instance, for each group to get involved in those efforts that help maintain the rights of people, this is how we, from a practical standpoint, fulfill the urgency of civic engagement. So when we understand that the Muslim just sitting at home and not getting involved, as ISPU mentions, the Institute for Social Policy and Understanding mentioned that this non un-Islamic uninvolvement can serve as a negative means for us. Meaning that if you don't get involved, it can be negative. It will have a negative impact on you and your family. Ask yourself the question, do you want people that do not understand Islam, who Islam and Muslims are, and what we represent from a creedal standpoint, from our belief to our actions, do you want them to speak for you? Or are you going to speak for yourself from your actions, from your involvement, from your love that exhibits mercy for mankind? <laughs> وَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ الحمد لله على إحسانه والشكر له على توفيقه وامتنانه So brothers and sisters, we understand that being involved in a locality is Islamic. Being involved in a locality is Islamic. It's from our religion to get involved in your surrounding areas, not only with Muslims, especially if you're in an area where it's predominantly non-Muslim, to get involved in the processes and in the efforts that take place, that the effort is there to help improve the lives of people, whether it's bringing forth a good or prohibiting and stopping an evil. And in this current situation, we see that Muslims may say that voting for a candidate that the decisions of this candidate can affect you and your daily life, we see there may be two groups. There may be an individual that say, there's no benefit in this, or they may say, I don't like the candidates. If the one that says we don't like the candidates, we have to understand we cannot have an idealistic approach, meaning that there will never be a perfect candidate. As Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, when he stood up after the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what did he say? يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ إِنِّي وُلِّيتُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَلَسْتُ بِخَيْرِكُمْ Verily, I was the one that was chosen and I'm not the best of you. أَصِّدْقُ أَمَانَةٌ وَالْكَذْبُ خِيَانَةٌ 
that truthfulness is a trustworthy thing. It is a trust and lying is deception. He said, and the strong one with you is the weak one with me until I take the rights of others from him, inshallah. And he said, the weak one that you all see is weak is the strong one with me until I give him his right, return his right to him. This is Abu Bakr. We initially should understand from our religion that Allah is perfect, human beings are not. From that, Actions will emanate from them, will come from them that are deficient. There may be some laws on immigration that you don't like about this candidate, but guess what? He's much better than the latter. And in Islam, we have a general principle that is extracted from all of the proofs in the Sharia that scholars have extracted. That relinquishing the harm takes precedence over bringing that which is beneficial. When we vote, we don't look at, no, I'm choosing the person that has done this bad. No, we say, I'm choosing the one that can eliminate the dhun. We look at this situation because if you don't, the number will stay at 75%. It will not increase. And then when you want to complain, لا تلو من إلا نفسك. Do not blame anyone but yourself. If you complain about a state, what's going on in your schools with your children, what's going on in your locality, from your parks, from your sidewalks, from the stores, from crime that's, being, that's taking place, and you're not getting involved in community service events. When you see churches in your locality speak badly about Islam, or they may choose candidates that openly speak badly about Islam, and they don't know about Islam, but you've been next to that church for 20 years. Have any of you reached out to speak to them? And if we have, this is exactly what we should be doing as Muslims. May Allah bless you all for that. Speaking to your neighbor and having dinner with him. Getting involved in outreach events. Trying to become someone that's involved in your local schools. Being someone that teaches CPR in your YMCA and you are a doctor and you happen to be Muslim. You are someone that is involved in the community from a grassroots level, as we mentioned, even to a political level. So when we see the people say that none of them are good, therefore I won't vote, you have just lessened the vote, which does not allow us to establish justice for ourselves and for others on this earth or in your locality. And what about the ones that say voting doesn't cause, it doesn't bring any benefit? Some of them may be preservationalists, they're self, they don't want to get involved at all. And they say it's all, all of it is, is kharab. But if you're living in this locality, I guarantee you that whatever vote has been taken will affect you and your family. So if you're not taking any effort to try to change that, we see the verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says after Ardh Bilal Rashid Rajim, with Qalat Ummatum Minhum, Lima Ta'idun Lahum Muhlikum, O Mu'adibum Adab and Shadida. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, when a certain group of people say, why are you ta'idhunhum? Why are you warning these people that Allah has destroyed them and will punish them? Adhaban shadida. What was the answer? Ma'adhiratan ila rabbikum. What was their answer? It is to serve as a means of excuse, an excuse for me in front of my Lord. In front of your Lord. Perhaps you have hope in the people. Perhaps there will be people that fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we may be sincere in saying, I don't want to get involved. But understand, if you don't, it will have an effect on you. We see that Yusuf alayhi salam was an individual that wanted to get involved. He said, make me a person that is in, in charge of the khaza'ina, that is in charge of the agriculture. He got involved in a non-Islamic society. So brothers and sisters, it is urgent for all of you. If you have the means and if you are able to affect society, whether it's in your convenience store, in your park, in your school, at voter registration, 
on your way to a school to register to vote and you are legible to vote, to get involved in your community, to help make a change. Because when it comes to you, this is when we are concerned. And that is not the approach of an individual that wants to help make a change in society. When we look at ourselves, nafsi, nafsi, wallahi, the people will feel that. Communities will feel that. To where when you as a group, as a name are oppressed, they're going to say, where was their involvement? And where was their assistance and help? Where was their voice even in an issue where people, where we were suffering? Because when you do not do that, it may by default make you a suspect rather than a citizen. You have to ask yourself the question, are the actions or your lack thereof closer to making you someone as a suspect to where people don't know about you? And assumptions will come, doesn't say that it's right, but it happens. Or will it make you a citizen to where people say, yes, we know those people. We know this group of people. I know my neighbor. I know this individual is involved with the education system, with the, with the, with the system of police brutality. They're saying something about it. They're doing something about it. They're involved. They're in inviting us to their community to speak about how to properly deal with immigration issues, how to properly deal with police brutality and, and law enforcement in our area, how to properly deal with education, how to properly deal with women in our society. What does that mean? This is what I'm talking about. When we do this, brothers and sisters, this is where we can make an effective change, not for ourselves in this common era, but for the eras to come. And this is how we affect people. Rabbana atna fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al-nar. Allahumma la tizu qulubana ba'di idhadaytana wa hawla la min ladunka rahma. Inna ka anta wahab. Allahumma sura islam wa al-muslimin. Allahumma sura islam wa al-muslimin. Allahumma sallu al-islam wa al-muslimin. Allahumma sallu al-mustadafine fi kulli makana wa zamanin ya rabbil alameen. Wa matta'na bi asma'ina wa amsarina wa quwatina abadin ma ahliyatina. Wa ja'al fa'rana ala man zulmana wa ansurna ala man adana. Wa la taj'al al-dunya akbar hammina wa la mablaga ilmina. Ya ayyuhal mu'minun. Inna allaha ya'mur bil-adli wal-ihsani wa ita'i dhil qurba wa yanha anil fahshai wal munkari wal baghi. Ya'idhukum la'allakum tathakkaroon. Fadhkuru allaha yadhkurkum. Remember Allah and he will remember you. وَاشْكُرُوهُ عَلَى نِعْمِهِ يَزِدُكُمْ And be thankful to him upon the blessings he's given you, he will increase you. وَلَذِكْرُ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرُ And the remembrance of Allah is the greatest thing. وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ مَا تَصْنَعُونَ وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ